everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Bishes RV here with what I'm gonna call a new take on a classic old floor plan from the uh, the the laminated Salem and Wildwood divisions, Heritage Glen and Hemisphere, or as I'm going to probably refer to them henceforth as Harry Glens. This is a totally conventional layout with a, a big wraparound rear kitchen, tons and tons of counter space. But it brings like a very large feeling living room because you have a super slide pack full of windows and the camp side of the RV has a big giant uh, overlook window with a couple old, what I'm gonna call twist and shout pivot free floating recliners, which is very handy because it helps you view the entertainment center. But that's the thing, a lot of more modern RVs are very focused on parking everyone's butts directly across from the TV. And that's not what this is. This is an RV that is still designed around the idea of being a little bit more social and, and kind of facing inward and drawing everyone in together. And if that doesn't work for you, that's okay. They make other models that might work a little bit better for you, but that's what this one does right here. It's carpetless, it's ventless, it's very pet friendly and clumsy spill friendly. Um, they're using what I call square flow windows to, to, to like basically almost every significant window in this RV opens up for airflow. I think the one in the door is the only one that does not. The underbelly is enclosed and has tank heaters. It's forced air heated. Uh, so a great extended season package on this, but one of the really kind of cool mind blowing features for the 24 season is they're one of the first mainstream towable brands I've ever heard of that is actually swapped to a full fiberglass roof cap, kind of like a motorhome. Um, it greatly uh, increases your resistance to like scratching tree branches and stuff like that. There's some really awesome features and qualities going on here. Um, but you know, again, not every RV is best for everybody. Like it's cool, it's got a new true queen bed now. It's got washer dryer prep, but there's also things it doesn't do and doesn't have that might be a problem for you. And I wanna show you the good with the bad and help you decide if this is the right one for you or not. And this right here is kind of what I'm talking about. Like if you really look at it, the seating on this floor plan, it just, everything really focuses inward. And it, it it's, it's a floor plan that's more about people than watching TV. Because truly, it doesn't have the best, most direct facing entertainment center. There's plenty of other models that they make that do that. This one gives us awesome window coverage on both sides of the RV, amazing airflow, and they've um, actually recently changed up their window treatments. Uh, I, I, it's not the official industry name. I call them square flow windows because I have stupid nerdisms for everything, but um, they're, uh, they give the RV a very clean look. Like you don't have any boxy valances and lambrequins, and it is actually hardwood framed out. It was just, it just makes everything look nice and clean and done with intent, you know? It's it's just a very, to me, aesthetically pleasing way to execute this, and it's kind of funny. Square windows were a classic RV thing that went away, and it's like they're kind of coming back. And it's that, that what's old is new again cycle, you know? Like, um, previously they were known as bell bottoms, but when I was going through high school, they came back in style, but they were called flares, you know, and it's, it's bell bottoms. Okay, cool. Uh, over here, the super slide is carpetless. It's that right now, what we're looking at is the marine woven stuff. They are, um, I've heard planning to swap to, uh, make the slide floor and the main floor match. Um, you know, so that, uh, I, I think that'll also just be another one of those little ticks in the boxes that just makes these look and feel nice and cleanly executed. Up top here, you do have a 15,000 BTU centralized air conditioner, and this is capable of being built with 50 amp service and, uh, or having a second air installed or just prepped from the factory. So it is one that like, if you're going to live in crazy hot sun country and you need that extra powerful airflow, you can get it, which I think is going to be a, a potentially very nice feature on these. Very pet friendly as well, because there's no uh, floor uh, heat ducts uh, applied into the Harry Glenn family. They, uh, unless absolutely required. There are a couple floor plans where they have to put one in because there's no wall to like, you know, route heating otherwise. So they're not, they're going to make sure that every room has heat, but best they can, they're going to keep the vents out of the floor. It's six and a half foot tall inside. So it's not extra tall, but that skylight up there above the kitchen, it does help kind of open everything up. And there, this is called a rear kitchen for a reason. There's a lot of RVs out there that'll call themselves rear kitchens that have two things for counter space, jack and squat. And this is not one of those. This has actually an extended dining bar. This is um, close to a foot longer than I've seen from some other similar builders with a similar layout. And I think you can actually see that reflected right here in the kitchen, because if you look, you have an extra long, uh, this piece. Sorry about that, had some 
technical difficulties. Uh, anyway, what I was saying is, this is an extra long kitchen counter. And you can kind of see that reflected up top because if the bottom's, you know, longer, the top has to be. You've got that extra panel right here where, you know, it's like an extra six, eight inches that they gained right here. Now, it's not enough to quite put an extra cabinet door in, but uh, at least they didn't waste the storage. It's not like it's super hard to get to. It's not totally buried in the corner. Where are the kitchen power outlets? Please tell me that they're under the overhead cabinet. Yes. Okay. Okay. I was like, uh-oh, I don't see any. So both on the left and right sides of that big extended overhead cabinet space, you do have some power outlets there. That would make this a pretty nice little rear uh, appliance corner. Now this at a glance looks like it's wasted space. You gotta remember you have that outside refrigerator uh, mounted right there. So that's actually being uh, used outdoors. The good news is the way everything else works um, you know, like you still have good drawer space. You're going to see you have some, you know, great pantry space. And that is a stainless farm sink, by the way. This is one of the little nitpicky things where it's like, I get that Heritage Glen, um, isn't trying to be the most expensive thing out there. And they, they really check some major boxes, but it, it, like, it, I just, I want the whole sink able to be covered personally. That's me. That's, that's just kind of how I feel, um, about it. But I guess everyone's got their own opinion on things. Speaking of opinions, what is your opinion of the way that they've trimmed out and framed out all the lighting up here. It's the same lights it always was. It just kind of, again, looks, I don't know, sort of neat. Or maybe you don't agree. I don't know. I don't know. Um, the uh, entertainment center over here, you got that electric space heating fireplace. And that can also provide some uh, pretty awesome heating. And there, there are some folks who will look at some floor plans in some of my videos. And they get really annoyed when all of the seating, um, you know, has its back to the windows. Well... This one, you know, has sofas on both sides. And as you saw there, it has the blackout privacy shades. Now, on the really big windows, they actually slide inward instead of from the top down, just because, like, that's what they need to do to make sure they can fully close this off. But it's cool that the nightshade is built right in. And these are um, tinted, uh, you know, kind of UV blocking windows. Now, that will help keep some sun out of the RV. It will also, if you own this RV for a long time and it's parked in one place for a while and you have the windows open or the shades open... It'll help keep the, um, the, the the sun from fading the sucker out, which I think is actually uh, also kind of nice. Now, there's a couple little awkward pockets of space in this kitchen where, uh, like, to the left of the microwave, there's just, there's some weird spots that are kind of difficult to access. So, you know, it's just kind of how it goes. There's different, different layouts have different things. A, uh, you know, L-shaped rear corner cabinets are always a little bit janky when it comes to something like that. I think they did the best they could given the circumstance, but it's a thing worth noting, worth pointing out, you know. Um, I like to try to share the good with the bad or just maybe just things in general that might be worth uh, consideration. Speaking of which, if you don't like the free-floating, you know, swivel recliners, the twist and shout, shake it off variety, as uh, Taylor Swift would call it in her Wildwood era, I've, I've been on that joke lately. I need to let it go, like Elsa. Um, you, you can move them. You can get rid of them. You can do anything you want. <gasps> oh, my Lanta. I just had a thought. Okay. They're not doing this, but tell me what you think about this idea. What if, instead of that L-shaped bar, that counter, they ran it all the way along the sidewall. And we've already got a sofa. So instead of uh, more seating places, what if that was like one of those dining bars where you had a bar that would be overlooking your giant campsite panoramic window? I almost lost my balance and fell down right there. <laughs> but what if that was a bar and you had some chairs or stools or something and you could look straight out that sucker. What if they had a couple outlets? It could be maybe like a little desk function space or something like that. It still doesn't necessarily solve the entertainment thing and it does make it a little less people inward focused. I think that, that could be cool. What do you think about that? All right, while you take a second to leave me a comment, do something like that, I'm gonna keep on sliding up here. Our entry door in a hyperlight is prepped and ready for a privacy shade. In a Heritage Glen, Harry Glen fifth wheel, it will actually have the shade installed. And I think that's probably just a reflection of the variance in the price points, with these being a little lighter, a little less expensive here. Toilet paper roller. 
terrible location. You can't reach it. Um, the storage kind of setup here in the bathroom is not terrible, though. Like, you've got a full medicine cabinet and a, a shallow but functional linen cabinet. Like, if you rolled up some towels, like, burrito style right there, they should probably work. And since the RV is only six and a half foot tall, it's not extra tall or anything like that. You will have, uh, you know, to, to basically have your head in the, in the bubble of the shower if you're a little over six foot like I am. Like I'm about, I'm six one probably, flat feet with the shoes I'm wearing. I'm about six two to give you a point of reference. And like most things like this, they are using the dollar store four inch fart fan. Um, in the travel trailer world, Rockwood and um, Cherokee are about the only two I've seen that consistently use the uh, the bigger Fajita Friday fume fighter. Now, what is kind of nice is beside the toilet, they don't have a heat vent in the floor. So that just, again, is nice in case you're playing um, Game of Thrones and end up uh, dealing with a little bit of Peter Sprinklage. So that's a thing to consider. I will also say a little point of inconsistency I found with the, the the Harry Glens, which is not affecting this trailer, but has affected some of the others I've seen. Um, some of them have that toilet so severely angled that my, le my left leg, if I sit at the toilet, has to be in the shower. This one's not like that. So maybe just a little bit of consistency that they could try to dial in there a little bit. Uh, either way though, like if a toilet comes and needs twisted, usually at the dealership, that can be adjusted fairly quickly. Now again, these can be 50 amp service, which is what we're looking at here. Um, you could add a second air conditioner to that if you are so inclined. Now, because we have a sliding privacy door for the bedroom over here on the left, they had to put the TV hookups in a really kind of wonky position. So this is not going to be an awesome bedroom, kind of like the living room. It's a little bit of a neck wrecker in that regard right there. Last year, though, these were all short queens. And 99.9% .9 of people said, Boo! We want a true queen. And Harry Glenn said, Okay. So now... We have a true queen bed and we're getting it thanks to their Versatile because it helps pull that bed away a little bit. And it's not like a folding bendy bed. It's just a normal queen mattress and the power incliner just kind of creases it a little bit basically and, and folds it up and makes that happen. Now you can kind of see a little bit of that little cutaway pocket right there. Let me get you here, uh, take a look at all the storage and get you a better look at it. Starting with how you have dresser drawers on both sides of the bed, which I think is awful nice. Um, and that giant mega uh, like overhead cabinet that actually does um, have gas struts for like, you know, easier access, which I think is a really cool feature that they put on this one. Now, uh, to get to the storage under the bed, like the bed can lift up. I don't, I think I forgot to show you that. I'm so sorry. But the bed can lift up. It's on gas struts. But to do that, you do need the versatile bed in the down position. Otherwise, you're going to end up torquing something, breaking something. So if you're sitting up in bed and you want to get to the storage underneath, you got to unfortunately drop it down. Uh, but I'd rather tell you that and maybe be a little disappointed now and have, help you not break your camper. That's my goal here. Um, over in that far corner, not only do you have like a shoe garage and a big extra closet you might notice in there, it does also have washer dryer hookups, which I think is maybe a defining make or break feature for some folks on a trailer like this. There are, oh gosh, I got, sorry, I got hung up getting off this bed here to get you that shot. Um, there is a lot of builders with this floor plan but very precious few of them are uh, offering that washer dryer hookup. So that might be important. What I'm wondering, and I don't think it's gonna go real good, is what the road mode access here is gonna be like. And I mean, the RV doesn't get a, a flat F grade for road mode access because we are uh, nap and crap accessible always. The bedroom and bathroom always readily available, but we are anything but snack-tastic. One of the hiccups with rear kitchens like this, they are definitely best used at a destination and are not typically the most skilled at getting you there. By the way, handy little pro tip for you. This applies to almost any RV with a slide out. When you're opening that slide, crack the entry door, even just a little bit or a window or a ceiling vent or something. Because if you think about it, what you're doing inside the RV is you are growing and expanding the cubic foot of airspace in here. And that has to get back filled with air. Don't get me wrong. It's not like RVs are airtight by any stretch of the imagination. But anything you can do to help uh, ease that push-pull, it's called the bellows effect, will take a little bit of stress off that slide motor. And especially if you're going to have the RV a long time or use it a lot, anything you can do to ease and alleviate a little bit of burden like that 
it's all those little drops in the bucket that add up long term. So hope you appreciate the little tip. And when it comes to towing something like this, my generalized recommendation is going to be something more in the three quarter ton category. There are theoretically some half tons that could safely handle this one. I think that that would only work if you have one of the heavier half tons and you're traversing more modest terrain. But uh, my, my general safe recommendation, I think, is going to be something in the way of a three-quarter. So why would you look at this one instead of some of the other things that have a similar floor plan? And why is this one, like, it, it came out of the, the part, even though this is such a, a commonly done floor plan, it came out very, very popular. And I think that fiberglass roof cap that you're looking up uh, at up there, I think that's one of the factors that's kind of contributing to that. Uh, because it's giving you like better impact and scrape resistance. It's also reducing the, uh, the TLC, the care, maintenance, and upkeep you have to apply to the RV, but please keep in mind, if anyone even tries to breathe and suggest it is suddenly somehow magically a no maintenance roof, get away from that snake oil salesman, because there is no such thing as no maintenance RVing out there, really. Although, Brinkley's doing the best they can to get awful darn close. But even they say, we don't want to say no maintenance, but we want to say greatly reduced. You still have sealants up on the roof that are still going to need some uh, love and time and attention. So there's still things there that you want to uh, kind of keep in mind. Now, I wanted to come back here first, because from the front of the RV, looking back, it almost looks like that forward awning arm should have actually extended further, but it's not a small awning. It's a 34 foot tip to tail camper. And you know, you're, you're gonna end up with a little bit of open sidewall as a result, even with a big awning. Um, the roof is still fully walkable. You know, they didn't change the roof structure. They just changed the roof cap and skin. Um, and they have gone to that telescopic removable uh, ladder prep right there. And notice how they are actually venting your stovetop heat outside. Now on the back wall here, you've got a hot cold outside utility shower and black tank flush, but you've also got a now factory standard and easily accessible stinky slinky sewer tube, which is super handy because you might notice they're not doing a rear bumper. Instead, what you are getting is that uh, a 250 pound rated accessory hitch on the back. Now, uh, power stabilizers, I'm pretty, man, I see a lot of RVs, so I'm so sorry. Sometimes certain details like options get blurry on me. Pretty confident. These can be outfitted with optional power stabilizers if you're so inclined. And our underbelly here, it's forced air heated and has holding tank heaters, which are both excellent. The belly panels are also sectionalized. So if you want to drop individual pieces for various service, maybe related reasons, you could do that. Um, on the, uh, the back corner here, right by the sink, which is not a bad spot for it, you've got your 60,000 BTU tankless on-demand water heater. Uh, that is powerful enough that you'll be able to take a shower and do some hot kitchen water simultaneously without someone having to take a chilly willy shower unexpectedly, which is no fun. Um, and this doesn't have a full outside camp kitchen. What you have here though, is instead of doing like the tiny fridge with a griddle that slides straight out from under it, and then you like burn your arms uh, trying to get into the fridge if the griddle's in use. They go with a bigger outside fridge, but they do include the griddle. I've got it stowed away in the front storage compartment to give you a sense of size and scale and perspective, but it mounts right here and there's a gas grill quick connect right down below. So you can under be under your awning. You can walk out of the entry door, come out and do some outdoor grilling or griddling or just have a drink or whatever. And on a rainy day, expand your living space a little bit further. And you saw the wide stance axles as I passed by them earlier. You may not have realized they are um, Goodyear Endurance radials, which is something uh, only a couple years ago they were still running on import tires. So that is, I think, a, a nice, cool feature and update. They really do tend to put the... Ooh, I ran into the trailer behind me here. Uh, they tend to put the outside speakers up awful darn high on these. I, I don't know. I, I feel like if you're going to do outside speakers, do them low and maybe mount them in the skirt because then it's not an issue. Nice big campsite overlook window. Uh, window. And again... You can see how, like I'm demonstrating here, you can open the thing and get some good airflow out of those suckers. Actually, they had left, uh, the reason I have those open, they had left the electric space heat and fireplace on. And I walked inside and I was instantly like almost starting to sweat. Like it was hot, man, inside there. And uh, I had to get some fresh air. So I cracked those windows open and knocked it down about 20 degrees in an awful big hurry. By the way, in case you're curious, since you don't have a rear bumper, spare tire is belly mounted and it is included on these. I don't want you to think it, uh, you know, goes without. Now on not like your, 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 what do I want to say? Refrigerator door in the back does not have slam latches, but your main outside compartments on all 
of your uh, Heritage Glen and Hemisphere families. They will all have the uh, slam latches and magnet holdbacks for easy access. And like I said, I left that griddle up here so you could get a size of scope and scale. Look at how small that griddle looks in comparison to this massive front, what the, they call it like a Texas sized storage compartment. And that's cool. Isn't Alaska bigger? But yeah, Texas is big. Texas is big for sure. Speaking of big and things that you wouldn't expect actually, did you know the state of Michigan has more miles of coastline than any other state? Kind of crazy. But if you think about it, Michigan is two chunks. It's two peninsulas surrounded by lakes. All of Michigan is coastline. It's just one of those things that you, you don't think about that, you know? And hey, largest concentration of fresh water known to the planet Earth on the surface anyway. Uh, again, though, I do want to point out for tow towing factors, it's a long trailer, you know? This is something, I almost call it a bit of a portable park model because it's a very park-friendly floor plan, but it's something that if you do want to move it around a little bit from time to time, it's not necessarily like it's impossible or terrible to do that. Um, it's not the smallest, lightest trailer, obviously, but it's, it's not out of control either. This layout, though, um, there is one thing that's like, uh, on the outside here, it's like, oh, real punch in the gut. It's a two-headed sewer monster. And the thing is, like I, like, I get it. Like, you've got your bathroom, black and gray, up there. And then you have your kitchen gray tank outlet back here. But the location of that is, I'm just going to say, my opinion is that this is awful. It's like literally, I think, the worst place that that could have been positioned. It's buried under the middle of the slide, and you have to crawl under it to get to the pole valve every time. I wish they would have just slid it back here, and as soon as I hit the end recording button, my next phone call is going to be to their guy. I'm going to offer that suggestion, but leave me feedback, leave me comments. Do you agree with that or not? So phone call concluded. Um, the chassis is a little bit different on these from almost everything else in the industry as well. They're not running on a Lippert I-beam chassis. They're running on a Norco um, huck-bolted Z-frame chassis made with high-strength, low-alloy steel. Uh, it is, uh, in my experience, the brands running on that chassis seem to have a little bit better service records because maybe they just hold together better. Now, the thing is, I don't have hard data on this, and I would encourage anyone who owns an RV who rides on that kind of chassis, share some comments. Let us know like what your service records have been, especially if you've owned RVs with different types of chassis. I'd be kind of curious to hear from you on that. Now, if you like this, but maybe maybe not their version of it, good news. You got a bunch of other things like Vibe makes something very similar. The Stick and Tin Salem Wildwoods makes something very similar. And there's also a bunch of other brands like Freedom Express that makes something that's a little bit... I got... Uh, there's something blowing in the air. Got all... Oh, you know that feeling when you like walk into a spider web and no matter what you do, it feels like it's all over you nonstop? Ah, oh, that's how I feel right now. Oh, boy, this video sure ended nicely. I'll leave you some links in the description to check pricing, availability, and videos to other similar units. Before I get hit in the face with something again, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Blah.